Hi, my exquisite listener. It gives us great joy to come your way today. We are pleased to welcome you to Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. This is Daylight Magazine. On today's program, we have life experience, life songs, and the moment of truth. I am your presenter for today's program. My name is Jeffrey Agbodo. It is now time to listen to a delightful song.
With Christ at the center of our lives, all our stormy seas will be calm. In our marriages, our jobs, and our everyday lives, we need to cling on to Him because He is the only rock that never moves. This is what the song says. You are currently hooked on to Daylight Magazine, coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. Throughout life, man has gone through different phases of realities and experiences. Out of these experiences, the Christian is drawn closer to God. To draw lessons from Christian experiences, sit back as we present to you Life Experience. Hello, my dear listener out there. You are welcome to the program Life Experience. A program that makes you to understand that although you are troubled on every side, yet you are not distressed. You may be perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not troubled. I'm privileged today to have with us here at the studio of AWR Ghana, Dr. Samuel Krante Prepim, who is a Ghanaian by birth who was trained in engineering and systematic theology. He is currently a director of campus ministry, seven student faculty and staff at the University of Michigan, USA. He also lectures in courses on Christian ethics and provocative author, having authored and co-authored more than a dozen books, three of which are best sellers. His books, Patient in the Midst of Trials and Afflictions, and this is love, have been a blessing to thousands around the world. As an inspirational speaker, Dr. Pepim presents Bible truth in dynamic, crystal clear way that will absolutely facilitate you. I am your host, Kuku Osei Ousu. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you. In the first place, can you tell us something by yourself? That is who Doctor really is. I am uh, the husband of one lady. Her name is Rebecca, and I have two sons, uh, not two sons, two children, a son and a daughter, Ellen and Sam. Um, I see myself as a big kid. I I genuinely enjoy the work I do, working with university students. Anything else you want to know from me? I guess for now, we'll hold it here we'll as it. Okay. we go on, we get to know more about you. Okay. Now, Doctor, what was your background before you became a preacher? I, uh, as you mentioned, I was trained in engineering. Um, that was essentially uh, my background, but I enjoyed good debate. Uh, I enjoyed uh, playing soccer, you know, things every young man would do. I grew up uh, during a typical time in Africa's history where nations were going through revolutions and turmoil, and on university campuses we were all caught up in those things, uh, trying to find meaning and hopefully trying to make our continents a better place. That was part of the baggage from which I grew up. Okay. What are some of your experiences in life? That sounds like I'm old, so that I have to talk about experiences in life. Uh, You know, I assume you you want me to identify certain significant moments in my life. Um, I I would trace everything to my background. Um, Perhaps you would understand it better if I tell you the story of actually one person who has impacted my life the most. And everything I am today was shaped by, by... She died about three years ago, and I had to fly down just to say thank you to her. Um, This woman, when she was 14 years old, she became orphaned. And uh, with her sister, her sister was four years old. And so uh, this 14-year-old young lady had to be a mother to her four-year-old. But that gave her a certain uh, feel about life. Life was very difficult for them. And because of the experience she had as she grew up, she later on, as I got to know her, she shared some wisdom with me. It just happened that when she was uh, at a marriageable age, she got a husband, 
had two children, and life was, you know, picking up slowly. And then uh, her husband suddenly dumped her. You know, her, her husband divorced her, went and picked a young lady. For what reason, that doctor? No reason other than the husband found a younger girl that he likes. And so the, the woman was so upset, but she was a Christian, so she kept her cool. And then after a couple of years, she found another man who married her with her two children. You know, it's not easy to, to go to marriage. But they also got two children. And when life was just stabilizing, that second husband died. So this woman uh, I'm talking about became so angry with God. If God would do this to her, you know, having been divorced once and now her husband died, stuck with four children, then she wouldn't serve God anymore. She was so angry with God, she decided to do very bad things that anyone can think of just to show to God that she's upset, she's giving up on God, religion, period. During that period, uh, I'm told that in her village, a gentleman came there with his wife and daughter, and this woman had an affair with that man. And of course, you know, uh, in Africa, in Ghana, especially in the villages, it's still considered adultery, and it's taboo, especially in the villages. Yeah. It was so shocking to the villagers, uh, even to the wife of that man, when the news leaked out about their affair, that that man's wife died from a broken heart and shock. And naturally, everyone turned their attention to this woman um, talking about who caused, you know, was partly responsible. The man who was involved fled town. No one got to know his whereabouts, you know, for more than 20 years. No one could find him. The woman uh, now was ostracized from the village. Okay. Because of her, the, her, 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 her role in that. And with her, the only person who stuck with her was her daughter, her sister, the, the, the one who had been four years old when they were orphaned. And she considered so many options well, about the, the pregnancy. She became pregnant as a result of that affair. Okay. I, I, I don't want to prolong your agony. I am the product of that uh, adulterous affair. Oh, really? I am, I am the child of that woman. And um, I don't need to tell you that life was very hard because I grew up, you know, when even the society, the village were against me because of the uh, bad experience or the, the you know the, the negative uh, background to my birth and I grew up without a father and uh, life was hard, poverty, difficulty, pain but I cited this incident to, to show you those were my formative periods in my life and uh, during my birth Strangely, my mother became a Christian again because when everyone had rejected her, she had nowhere, no one, nothing. She discovered she needed God even all the more. She repented of her sin. And so she named me Samuel. Though she had other children in a way, I was like her Samuel, the only child. And uh, because of what happened, she didn't want me to be a problem to society, a liability, because people keep reminding her, we told you this and so uh, she sacrificed, she sold everything in her poverty to give me an education so that people would not point fingers at her. I grew up under those circumstances, and so trials, pain, suffering, you know, were part of my life. Doctor, all too soon we've come to the end of this program, and I would like to thank my dear producer Mrs. Baudola Bell who has really made this program very successful and all the staff of AWR Ghana I have been your host Kuku Osei Ousu. remember please still keep your hope in Christ it's bye for now Kindly hooked on to Daylight Magazine.
coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. A-W-R, Ghana, Voice of Hope. We will bring you joy. Keep hope alive. A-W-R, Ghana, the Voice of Hope. You've been listening to the Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. If you need further information or study materials on issues we have discussed, please contact us on Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley University, P.O. Box AF595, Adenta Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the Internet, send us an email through radio at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on plus 233-307-051. 058. If our line is busy, don't give up. Keep trying, for we are expecting your calls. Même si pendant trop longtemps, tu as refusé de lui parler. Jésus connaît tes sentiments. And without God, we can't achieve anything meaningful. For this reason, it is prudent to listen to and apply the Word of God in our lives. Please let's listen to the Word of God on Moment of Truth. Calling, calling for you and for me. Calling for you and me. on the portals. 
He's waiting and watching, watching for you. I welcome you to Moment of Truth. This moment, I want to share with you a topic I have captioned, Counterfeit Gold, Don't Trust It. Before I give the message, I want to share with you this story. There was a young man in Colorado, United States, who stayed with his father, who was a security officer. At the tender age of two, the mother died of pneumonia, and so this little boy was left with the father alone in the house. One day, when the father decided to go out of the house for a trip, he asked him, Wilson, do you love me? And he nodded. Said, yes, Daddy, I love you so much. The father went ahead and told him, If that is it, then Wilson, listen to my voice. I have a treasure in this room. I want to plead with you. Anytime you want to go out, please lock this room. And he nodded in agreement. One afternoon, he returned from school. And his friends came to him. That Wilson, can we go out to play? He nodded and quickly followed them. He forgot that he did not lock the room. In the course of time, a friend to the father, who had monitored their steps and wanting to take something precious from their room, sneaked and came to the room and picked a precious mineral which the father had hid in the room. Imagine the loss of this family. I want us to read a text in Mark chapter 13, verses 22 and 23. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise, and shall show signs and wonders, to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. In his departing message towards his crucifixion, Jesus alerted his disciples to beware of false prophets. For he warned them, false Christs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and miracles to deceive the elect. Jesus emphasized again in verse 23 that the disciples needed to take heed of the words of Jesus. Like Wilson's father warned him of the hidden treasure, Jesus has also warned us of false prophets and teachers. Jesus is omniscient and foreknew the plans that Satan will lay down towards the end of time. One of the characteristics of the devil is lying. When we read John 8:44, the latter part, we are informed that he is the father of all lies. And so it will not be out of place when his followers will be liars in the close of time. However, the warning is clear in identifying the enemies of the Christian. My brother, my sister, note this. Their methods, however, challenge us because they will secretly introduce distinctive heresies among you. When you read Second Peter chapter 2, verse 1, you have a record of this. In John 8, 32, we are warned and informed that we shall know the truth, and it is only the truth that can set us free. The text indicates that there is a set of truth that as Christians we need to depend on. When we read the account in John 8, 32, the Bible says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Truth, in that particular text, is preceded by a definite article there indicating the availability of certain facts about what is true. Now, the Bible is our standard as Christians. Truly, Jesus has said that if we believe in his name, we can even do things more than he did. But my brother, my sister, I want you to answer these questions. Is someone causing a woman to get pregnant just in a day by command without intercourse a prophet? Baffing a woman at the seashore at 12 a.m., is that individual considered to be a prophet? Is telling a woman that God says I should sleep with you, is that individual considered to be a prophet? The Bible is clear, 
And Jesus forewarned us that we need to be careful about these people. These people have entered the Christian family in illegal ways, or others have allowed them to come in. Just as a city dweller might choose to open the city gates to the enemy. My brother, my sister, I want you to listen to this. Because their forest does not have the word force stamped on it, some find it difficult to spot them. But praise be to God that we can trap them by the following means. One, we need to critically evaluate them to determine if they come from God. When we read 1 John 4, 1, we are informed to test all spirit and to see whether they are from God. Secondly, we need to consider whether they are fair to the Bible. We need to be conscious that if such individuals do not depend on the Bible, then we need to be careful about them. Thirdly, we need to consider what kind of life they lead. Matthew seven sixteen tells us that by their fruits, we shall know them. And so if somebody comes to you and tells you that he's a prophet, my brother, my sister, you need to be critical and assess him whether he is worth of his statement. I want to tell you that the Bible remains our standard. And please, depend on the Bible. And it is only by reading it that you will be familiar with these unscrupulous people. May God bless you. And may God strengthen you. And may God care for you this moment. I pray. Amen. I am your brother, Ransford of Safi Jesse. God bless you. You are currently hooked on to Daylight Magazine, coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. A-W-R, Ghana, Voice of Hope. You've been listening to the Daylight Magazine coming to you from Adventist World Radio Ghana, Voice of Hope. If you need further information or study materials on issues we have discussed, please contact us on Adventist World Radio Ghana, Valley University, P.O. Box AF595, Adenta Accra, Ghana, West Africa. Or if you have access to the Internet, send us an email through radio at vvu.edu.gh. Or better still, you can call us on plus 233-307-051. 058. If our line is busy, don't give up. Keep trying, for we are expecting your calls, emails, and letters. Today's program was presented by Jeffrey Abudu. Stay blessed. <laughs>